If I can just take a minute to tell you a little bit about how my involvement with Mayors for Peace occurred. I uh, first became involved with Mayors for Peace in 1989. I had uh, just been elected as a city councillor in 1987. I was uh, wet behind the ears. I think I was about 36 then. And the mayor uh, of the city of Burnaby asked, because he, he had an interest in Mayors for Peace, whether or not I would attend the Mayors for Peace conference in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Well, I was absolutely thrilled to have the opportunity, but uh, there was a lot of trepidation about going over and mixing with all of these mayors from around the world. Uh, I arrived in, in Hiroshima and went through what can only be described as a life-altering experience. I had the opportunity when I was in Hiroshima to visit the Hiroshima Memorial, to participate in uh, the events surrounding the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, to meet the survivors of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and to sit with them and talk to them about the effects on them and their family. In fact, the generational effects of that war, the suffering that it caused, the devastation, the changes made in their life. And the thing that struck me about the people who had gone through that devastation was the absolute lack of bitterness. There was no hatred as a result of it. Those people were committed to never letting anyone else suffer the pain that they had suffered. And the mayors of both of their cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, had decided to become leaders in forming the Mayors for Peace movement in recognition of the desire of their citizens to prevent anyone else suffering what Hiroshima and Nagasaki did. When I arrived there, is, uh, I was mixing with mayors from all over the world. It was an incredible experience, sitting down with the mayor from Kuyatra, Syria, the mayor from Ho Chi Minh City, mayors from all over the world who were sitting there talking to me about the issues in their cities. And one of the things we immediately discovered was it was exactly the same issues. It didn't matter where we were in the world. We were worried about water and sewer and roads and housing. We were worried about having recreation facilities for our citizens, developing our economy. We were on the ground practically trying to build community and looking to achieve cooperation. And it didn't matter where we came from in the world. All of us were interested in the same things. That to me was, was an experience that brought home to me exactly what uh, the representative Kucinich was saying is that uh, we are far more similar than we are different. And when we, the, when we had the opportunity to sit together, I realized that there were people from all over the world who had progressive ideals, people who were committed to finding peaceful solutions to war, people who wanted more than anything to be able to establish a safe community to raise their children and their families in, people who wanted to improve the opportunities for people to enjoy their life. It was a very meaningful experience on so many levels. Not only did we have the realization of the impact of war, the devastation caused on people, but also we had the hope that people from all over the world, when they were brought together, could make a real difference. So I was, I was totally, totally convinced that Mayors for Peace was one of the movements that could make a real change in the way we have been operating. I can tell you at one moment I was sitting at a bar having a drink and I, uh, next to me a gentleman sat down, introduced himself, said he was from Afghanistan. He was the mayor of Kabul. 1989, I want you to remember this in the context. The mayor of Kabul spoke perfect English, drank Beck's beer. He, uh, he said to me, do you know any of the American representatives? Can you get me introduced to some of the American representatives? I said, well, why would you want that? And he said, well, I just flew out of Kabul. We are under attack by the Mujahideen, and I want to find someone in America I can talk to. And I said, well, of course, as a mayor, you can talk to anyone, but you know, what's the background? And this is in 1989. I was naive. I didn't know at all. The mayor uh, explained to me that he had been trained in Texas in the Green Beret, had become part of the Afghani military, received his college education in the U.S., had followed through to become a, a representative of the people as the mayor of Kabul. 
and that he was at that point seeing the Russians withdraw from protecting them from the Mujahideen and the Mujahideen had surrounded his city and he believed when he went back it was unlikely that he would survive and he was begging for an opportunity to speak to any American he could find to tell them it was their government that was supporting the Mujahideen. It was their government that was allowing Afghanistan to be torn apart and it was their government that was going to make sure that Afghanistan went into the hands of the Taliban. He had written letters to the Washington Post that had never been printed. He had written letters to the New York Times that had never been printed. He had made phone calls to everyone he knew in the U.S. that might have power. And finally, the Mayors for Peace was the only mechanism for him to try to find some kind of voice. Unfortunately, being young and naive and not nearly understanding the issues, I accepted what he said, just simply introduced him to some American mayors, and never followed up on it. I still to this day don't know whether that mayor survived the capture of Kabul. But I do know that the mechanism that we had there for mayors to come together was one of the last hopes for a mayor to be able to, to find some forum to be able to tell people about what was happening in his community, in his country and to seek some solace, some help, some opportunity for someone to listen. Marriage for Peace is an organization that brings together community leaders from all over the world with one sole purpose, and that is to find a peaceful resolution to the conflicts that devastate our countries, the illness that plagues society for us. We are dedicated to the abolition of nuclear weapons, and our vision is by 2020 ensuring that there are no more nuclear weapons in the world that our people can lay, live in, in safety and security. We all know as, as mayors for peace, as members of this organization, that the commitment goes farther than simply the abolition of nuclear weapons. It goes to finding peaceful ways that we can communicate with each other, to focus on what builds strong communities, to look for ways to cooperate, to look for ways that we can exchange information, that we're able to allow our citizens to understand in this, this very close world, in this global world, the importance of communication between us to be able to establish the kind of ties that will bind, not separate. And I can tell you in meeting with the mayors for peace, every time I meet with them, I'm invigorated. When I went to New York City to attend the Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conference, I was invigorated to be able to sit with the mayor of Glasgow and the mayor of Christchurch, with American mayors from around the U.S. and be able to tell the U.N. that we were one voice speaking on behalf of 1,385 mayors representing hundreds of millions of people who are committed to finding a solution. For too long, the issue of peace has been held in the hands of people who were interested more in ego, interested more in the economic greed of multinational corporations, interested more in how they could impose their wills on others. It's time that we took the issue of peace away from them and we made the issue of peace a local issue, an issue that comes from communities.